At approximately 4 p.m., we arrived at our predetermined launch point inside Carleton County. On our last expedition to this area, we were fortunate enough to gain access to the area via private property. However, due to circumstances regarding the dates we chose, this option was not available to us. Without being able to scout a new entranceway to the area, we relied heavily on topo maps and Google Earth to determine alternative pathways to our camp. Surprisingly, this turned out quite well and we were able to unload the ATVs at our first predetermined starting point. Having had to use an alternative launch point meant extended travel times from our truck to the camp. The type of terrain we encountered between the two points was very hard on our equipment, but the trip was made without any major failures. It was a great feeling arriving back at the camp we stayed at almost a year ago to the date. We pulled in just as the sun was going down and started making camp and unloading gear along with gathering wood for a fire. The temperature at that point was around 50 degrees and comfortable. Because we had to traverse a very wet and large bog along the way, most everything was covered in peat and what I call schmeg. So cleanup consumed some time initially. We finished putting up the tent in the dark and built a fire. Once the sun had completely fallen below the horizon, the temperature went right along with it. Tim and I layered up with clothing and finished unpacking the things we would need for that particular night. At 10.22 p.m., Tim and I walked to the power line cut and scanned the area with the Yukon night vision unit. Tim did some yells. Nothing was heard or seen. At this point, our objective for night one had been met. Night one's objective was to arrive at camp at a reasonable time and set up our camping equipment and a minimal surveillance detail. This consisted of a trail cam in our sight, an audio recorder, and our video cams armed and on the ready. Because the primary mission and objective of this particular expedition was to deploy a remote dummy camp, we knew beforehand we would not have the necessary time to construct the camp the first night. While sitting around the fire and discussing the next day's itinerary, we heard owls and the signature thumping of the rough-tailed grouse. Nothing out of the ordinary was noted on night one. On Saturday, after we awoke and did some general things around the camp, we arrived at our location of the kitty camp at about 2 p.m. We picked a corner of hardwoods that lay adjacent to a low-lying swamp. This was about one mile away from our base camp. The corner area that we chose was slightly elevated and we felt it would be suitable for allowing our centimeters and audio files of children playing to be smelled and heard for greater distances. We also used different types of attractants such as pinwheels and LED balloons. We felt that if something was walking in the lower areas around the camp, these items might stimulate some curiosity since they could be seen easier due to the elevation shift. Tim set up a two-man tent and I went ahead and started placing trail cams at various points in and around the camp. Three trail cams were utilized with one having video recording capability. One trail cam was placed looking behind the tent, one facing outside the camp, and the vid trail cam was aimed to view a cross section in the area in front of the tent. We left the cams in plain view only to place pinwheels next to them in an attempt to mask them to some degree. The intention of the camp setup was to make everything obvious with hopes that it would eliminate any fear of a trap. We decided to use the kitty theme because we felt children's voices along with the things they might play with would be less threatening and maybe even inviting to a curious Sasquatch. After Tim finished setting up the tent, he then placed his H2 audio recorder on a tripod outside but near the tent. Then he set up the Sony SR45 Nightshot video camera on a tripod along with a 3 watt infrared flashlight inside the tent looking out the doorway. The Sony cam and the IR flashlight both used 850nm light sources. I then set up the small boom box we would be using to broadcast the audio clips. In this short video clip, Tim describes the basic layout of Operation Kitty Camp. And uh, what we have here is our mock tent site. And this is a campsite, a mock campsite that's got full surveillance of audio and video. And let me show you what we got here. First thing to get the Bigfoot in, we've got a fire going that's going to get some scent out there and uh, hopefully get some going in the right direction and bring something in and come investigate. A few of the uh, food items that we got here is uh, what I call Bigfoot kebab and that's a few apples on a string and uh, I got that about six feet high um, so we know that whatever takes that if something does uh, it had to grab it so it's something tall uh, you can probably eliminate small foraging animals grabbing something like that so that's just one device um, a few of the attracting devices that we have is uh, these LED balloons here and uh, these have a LED inside the balloon and at night those really light those balloons up and they're pulsating so hopefully that's going to intrigue something um, so we have one here we have one on the tent uh, we have we have a trail cam with video capability here and if something walks into the motion sensor it's going to trigger 
uh, video recording. So anything that comes in here is going to be recorded on video. Uh, we also have two other trail cameras on the periphery of the camp that are going to capture photos. Uh, we have pinwheels set up. That's just another kind of attractive device to bring something in to kind of investigate. And lastly, in order to capture anything that comes in here, we have a video camera in the tent and we have an audio recorder. So what we have for audio is my H2 audio recorder here. And I have that powered by a marine battery that's inside the tent. And I'm going to leave that recording when we leave. So it's going to be recording uh, audio the entire time. Uh, last, in order to catch some good quality video, is I have a Sony Night Shot video camera in here also running out the battery. And what I'm going to do is press record and we're going to walk away and let that record throughout the night. Um, in order to get some type of illumination and uh, when it's dark here, we have an infrared flashlight that works in conjunction with the Sony Night Shot. So we have video, we have illumination, and lastly, we have uh, a boom box in there also attached to the battery. And what that is, is we have a CD recorded with uh, children playing and also baby crying. Uh, and hopefully that's going to attract something to want to come in and take a look inside the tent. Um, Bigfoot's been known to be attracted to uh, kids' sounds and to women, so we're going to test that here and see if that works. Um, we have a few other food items in here like some fruit and some popcorn. And uh, we're just going to walk away from here, press record on everything, and come back tomorrow and uh, check the, uh, the data and see if we got anything. And then we'll let it go one more night and see what happens. This is a shot from the Sony SR45 from inside the tent. As you can hear us, we are slowly leaving the area and heading back to our base camp. In the upcoming sequence, you'll hear examples of the three audio files that were played from inside the tent. Oh, I'm going to die.